I just want you to see how with gear and flaps, you're really struggling even on a cool day. I am standing on right. that rudder. All right, right I'm going to give it back to you because we're not going to make the runway. I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. So in my dreaming about buying an airplane and uh, just looking for a general flying challenge, I recently got checked out in a Cessna 310, which is a light twin engine airplane. Um, and in this video, I'm gonna show you toward the end some of the real challenges of flying a twin engine around when only one engine is operating. But I also wanna show you my checkout process because I think that if you follow the process I used, especially if you're checking out in an expensive airplane, I could save you a ton of time and money. So checking out in a new airplane is something that we all do eventually, whether you buy an airplane or you just wanna get checked out in a new airplane at your flying club. Um, and the way you approach the checkout process, or the way I approach it anyway, after 20 years of teaching, I think is really important. You have to show up prepared. And the very first step in all that is making sure that you read the POH cover to cover. So I was able to get the POH right off the Mach 5 website. I email it to myself, I open it in ForeFlight, and I have it saved as an imported document right here on my iPad. Make sure that you've read the entire thing straight through, including the supplements at the end. Uh, once that part of the process is complete, you have to do a little bit of dry time. So you go to the airport, you ask for the, the book when the airplane's not in use, and you just sit down in the airplane and run checklists. Uh, find the little switches, the avionics master, figure out where the fuel pumps are, go through your flows for engine start, for the run up, uh, for the climb and cruise and before landing, and then go through all the emergency procedures. And this may not be just one session, uh, you might have to go down there more than once. And here I am getting checked out in a 310, which is more airplane than I can afford. Uh, I've got a great CFI named Chester here at Mach 5, and I expect to pay him every bit of money that, that is owed to him from the minute he shows up till the minute he leaves. So I'm not gonna save money by whittling down those tiny little incremental costs. Where I'm really gonna save money is by being over-prepared for the lessons. Uh, so before I even did my first flight with Chester, I went out and I did some dry time. All right, you guys, here I'm sitting in the 310. Um, I'm going to go through all the procedures. It takes a certain amount of like butt time in the seat just to feel comfortable with everything. So um, that's what dry time does. It gives you a little bit of a head start on the butt time in the seat. Uh, we've read the POH and we've looked at the procedures. So today we're just going to run the checklists while we're here in the aircraft. Uh, and take your time. You know, we're gonna start with the engine start checklist. Let's see, for engine start, our seat back is locked, avionics is off. We located that over here on the side panel. We can turn the taxi light off, the strobe light off. Um, all emergency switches are off. Okay, the fuel selector is gonna go on the mains. You can see the main tanks, but you know, there's multiple settings. Like you can run the left tank, left engine off the right tank, the right engine off the left tank. So uh, lots of stuff to do there. Man, it's getting hot in here, but I can feel with every second, like how much more comfortable I'm getting in this aircraft. So if I do this two or three times before I actually come here for the checkout where I'm paying for this expensive airplane and paying for my CFI, uh, I'm just going to save a ton of money and I'll be that much farther ahead of the game. So before too long, I'm ready to go out on my first flight. Uh, this is my CFI Chester. And um, we immediately dive into the finer points. We're able to look at things like the HSI doesn't slave automatically so I have to use this switch here to manually slave it to the compass. Now he shows me all of the little nuances of the airplane because I'm already familiar with the basics. Okay, so after the first flight, it's time to come on the, the second checkout flight here. And um, this is where we're really dealing with engine failures. You know, there's an old saying about flying twins, which is uh, in the event of an engine failure, the other engine will fly you to the scene of an accident, right? Kind of a dark thought, but it underlines the uh, fact that controlling a multi-engine airplane on one engine can be challenging and you won't necessarily get the performance you expect 
Uh, in some cases, you're, you're going down, you're just going down slower. So check this out, this is Chester and I um, at sea level with nobody else on board, no bags, uh, and he pulls my engine when we have gear down and full flaps in the pattern. So we're turning left base and he pulls the left engine just to sort of you know get into this and show me what can happen if, if this happens to you in flight. So check it out. All right, so right as you turn base and get full flaps, I'm gonna pull the inside engine, just remember a little more power, and Good. that's all you need, okay? All right. All right, uh, Lincoln traffic, twin Cessna 310, Romeo Romeo's left base, 33 Lincoln. So go ahead and go full flaps. Okay, inside I just way. want you to have them and see all right, so here we go, full flaps. Now I'm going to pull your left engine. All right. Just a little more power on the right one, and you're good to go. Okay, ooh, yep. No, keep it in there. Yes, sir. Good, wow. Full doesn't hurt. So let's just see how this works. Right, man. There you go, yep. All right, so. I lo oh, you got me back? All right. Here you no, I'm no, you're good. It's, it's failed. Just keep right. flying for the runway. So um, I would identify, obviously we got a dead left engine here. Right here, you got nothing you can do, just keep your power in there and keep going. I just want you to see how with gear and flaps, you're really struggling even on a cool day. And that's not a simulated feather right there, is it? No, it's not. Oh. I'm just saying you were turning base and flying yeah, yeah. and you didn't have time to do anything. I want you to see what you're dealing with Man, here. And that is like, I am standing on right. that rudder. All right, right I'm gonna give it back to you cause we're not gonna make the runway. All right. There you go. I'll just kind of cool. give you back to something like normal, Perfect. roughly. All right. Just want you Thanks. to see. Yeah, I appreciate it. I'm and up for seeing whatever is possible. So the trick there would have been to feather that engine ASAP. Uh, yeah, but you had the right thing in mind. Don't go full flaps so early, and I talked right. you into it. I said, let's do it to yep, see yep. how it works. So Got it. Three green. All right, three green. Speeds yeah. on target. Probs full. Mixture full. That's all right. That's all right. All right. All right, and the last thing we wanted to work on was actually landing on one engine because consider you have to pull the power back when you come into land, uh, but now you're pulling the back, pulling the power back, but you've got that asymmetric thrust. So it's kind of a it's a dance on the rudders to keep everything lined up and over the runway. So this time turning base will fail the same engine again. All right. And don't think about identify verify feather. Just see if you can make it to the runway on one. Okay. okay. Yep. All right, three so green. 120, we got three green. Very we got power good. pretty much where we want it. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, you're starting to turn. So go ahead and fail your inside engine. Pull it all yeah. the way back. There you go. Come in with full power on that good engine. There you go. Come on in. Full power. All right, let's see how we do this time. All right. Lincoln traffic, twin Cessna 3 and 0, Romeo, Romeo, wide left base, 3-3, three, three, Lincoln. There All you right. go. You got a little extra speed. You can turn into altitude out here. All right. There you go. You can get this thing back, you know, 100 or so. Did you? All right. So VMC's red line, so we're not close to that. All right. Yeah. Short field approach speed is 90 knots. Uh, we don't necessarily want to be 90 on one engine, but if you had to. Yep. All right. So let's just see how we do. You're going to see here that we're still barely going to make it. Yeah, crazy. Lincoln traffic, three, uh, twin Cessna 3 Romeo, Romeo final, 3-3 three, three, Lincoln. All right, let's ease it back to 90. So I want you oh, to see, there, there we Rob, go. There you go. So I want you to see that even swimming upstream in this headwind, you'll make it at 15 degrees of flaps. Yes, you will. On a cool day. Now at Palm Springs at 100 degrees, with who the, knows? With all the load on board, yeah. Exactly. Uh, very good. So just keep it coming down. We'll land on one. Just be ready with your feet. Yep. And we're going to just slowly chop the power. We're not going to chop the power real fast. Yep. Lincoln traffic, Sarah's 3 Lima Golf, 10 miles southeast, RNAV 3-3. Three, three. 
straight in, making traffic. Sink going, power, 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 there you go. Keep that power in there, there you go. A little down there, power, power, power. There you go, all right. Now slowly use your power off. There you go. All right, very good. That's the way to work that rudder. All right, there you have it, you guys. You can see how all of that came together with a little bit of studying, a little bit of dry time, and two lessons. Uh, Chester and I were able to focus on what really mattered. He was able to show me the nuances of the airplane and go straight into the more complex operations like engine failures. We didn't spend a lot of time looking for stuff like the avionics master switch. So anyway, a huge thanks to Chester and a thanks to everybody over at Mach 5. Um, huge thanks to you guys for watching this video. Please leave me a comment and let me know what kind of videos you'd like to see come to the channel. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that little alert bell so you get notified of uploads. A big thanks to the sponsors. Remember that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. Please share the video far and wide with your friends. I'm Jason Miller, and until next time, be safe and fly your best.